Okay, so I'm back in my Mac and I'm actually looking at github.com and I'm already logged in into GitHub. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over how to create your own repository on GitHub and then how to turn that repository into something you could store your code and your website code in and then have that same repository turn around and host your website for you. As part of this demonstration, I'm obviously going to use some Git commands in order to commit, in order to save, and in order to upload our code that is local in our machine to github.com. Now, I highly encourage you to actually learn Git pretty in depth. I'm not going to have a whole course here in just a lecture or so on Git. I will, however, give you enough of the commands so you'll be able to be functional. But I would very highly encourage you to go and read at least through the branches chapter of the Git book. And the way you could do that is it's free online. You could just say Git book. If you say Git book, the very first thing that should come up is this Git book link. And this is a book that if you wanted to actually you could get as a PDF or you could read the entire thing online. And I uh, strongly suggest that you read the first three chapters. It's really not that complicated. But for our purposes, as long as you know the commands that I'm going to give you, you should be okay. But if you want to become a full stack developer or even just a front end developer, you should definitely try to learn Git and its basic commands. Okay, so I am in my account right now. This is my Y hike and that's my account. And probably you're going to see something very similar, but you probably aren't gonna have as many things going on uh, possibly in your GitHub account. So the first thing you wanna do is create a GitHub repository. This is how you're going to basically submit your assignments as well. So you could go to your picture, your icon, whatever it is, and there's a little icon next to it, uh, to the left of it, and it's a plus. And if you click on it, click on the down arrow, you could say new repository. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new repository. We'll call it Coursera Test. And this is like I already tried that before, so it already knows that I've tried that. So Coursera Test, and I'll give you a green check mark saying, yes, it's available. And I'll just say that this is a Coursera, Coursera Test repository. And it's going to be public. If you want to make it private, you have to pay. We're not going to want to pay, so we're going to just leave it public, and we'll go ahead and initialize it with a readme file. Always a, always a good idea. And all you have to do now is click Create Repository. Let's go ahead and do that. And voila, I have my own repository ready to go. So once I have this repository, I can start interacting with it, not only online here, but also through my command line prompt and upload code to this repository. But before we do any of that, let's prepare this repository to host our actual website to the outside world. In order to do that, we have to do a couple of special things. Number one is we have to go to settings. We'll go ahead and go right here on the top right. We'll click on settings. And if we scroll down, you'll see here GitHub Pages, automatic page generator. Basically it says create a beautiful website or a site for your project with our automatic GitHub Pages generator. Okay, so all you really have to do is click this button, launch automatic page generator. And it doesn't really matter what this says. You could certainly customize that later. You could scroll down all the way down and say continue to layouts. And by default, it's gonna give you this pretty neat layout actually. And you don't have to even check it out. You could just click publish page. So the layout is not really what we're after. So once we're done with that, you'll see here that your project has been created at HTTP and you'll see your username, your GitHub username, and then the URL is github.io slash Coursera test. That's where your page is located. So if I go right now and copy this link right here and we'll go to a new tab, you're really gonna see the entire website that we just saw right here, right? And that's all pre-filled for you already. Now this link will not always stay here. If you refresh the browser, it's gone. So how do you, if you forget where that link is, where, where do you find it? Well, you go back to settings and you scroll down and under GitHub pages, you'll see that link again. You could actually click it, open it up and there it is again. Now when you created the GitHub pages, let's go back to our repository. We'll click on this Coursera test. So now when you created that, that link, what you actually did is you created a separate branch. Now, I'm not going to go into, again, the explanation, a whole big explanation about branches, but the bottom line is the way Git works is it can have several branches, like several parallel streams almost, um, of the same repository, of the same kind of a database of your code. So the way you see what branches you have is right here, branch 
uh, and right now it says it's master. If you uh, click on it, you'll see that there's another branch here that actually wasn't there before. If we opened up before, we would have seen only master. But now there's another one called GH Pages. If you click on that, GH Pages, you'll see all this stuff here you really didn't put in here before. Well, this stuff is that... Um, is that website that was created for you. So that index.html is that big page with a giant green banner that you've seen. So now, if you're an advanced GitHub user, feel free to use whatever branch you want and then go ahead and merge your stuff into the gh-pages branch. But just know that whatever is in gh-pages branch, that's the only thing that's going to show up on that special link that you created. Nothing in the master, nothing in the other branches will actually show up. So for the beginners, what I would suggest doing is that you should always use just gh pages and commit everything there. But just remember that the base directory is that website that got created. So if I were you, I'll probably create a subfolder and put everything into that subfolder and leave this front page alone. Or if you want, you could wipe the whole thing out and just create your own page here, right here in the, in the root folder. But for now, it's time to go ahead and take this repository and bring it down to our local machine. Well, the way we could do that is we have this right here, this URL. This URL actually points to our repository. You could see it has Coursera test.git. And we could copy this URL by just cl simply clicking this link. We'll go ahead and open the terminal. So now what we'll do is we'll say git clone. Clone is the command to actually take the repository that is somewhere remotely and just provide the URL to that repository. And you can see we're done. If we do ls now, you'll see that I have Coursera test. That is our repository right there. Let's go ahead and cd into it. And you'll see that the only thing there, it's readme. Okay, so really what's going on is if you do git status, you'll see that we are on branch master and nothing really is right now changed. The thing is though, we don't really want to be on branch master. Again, again unless you're a, you know, a more advanced user, really want to be on the branch GH pages. And the way you could do that is to say git checkout GH pages. And when we do that, now we say git status, we're going to be on GH pages. And if you do ls, you'll see all that index.html that params.json and style sheets folder, it's all there from, if you switch back to the browser, it's all right here in that branch. So now we have a couple of choices. If we want, we could just go ahead and wipe out this whole thing and we'll basically wipe out that auto-generated website, or we could leave it alone and just basically make a directory, uh, make a directory and then call it, let's say, site and cd into that site directory and there's nothing there great so now we could go ahead and open up sublime text and we'll save this page right here we'll go ahead and save this page to our coursera coursera test and site we'll save it and call it index.html and we could quickly do html and do control space for a quick little template. We'll say hello Coursera and we'll have H1 here. Also say hello Coursera. Okay, so we have a very quick page. We saved it. Let's go back to our terminal. We'll do LLS and we see this index.html. So now to check what's going on in our local Git, we'll say Git status again and we'll see that actually dot slash and that's because we're inside uh, the site directory we say that dot slash is not actually committed at all well we could go one directory up and then we'll do git status and that will tell you that the site directory is not even uh, committed and it's not even marked to be committed so the way git works in order to be committed into uh, kind of your code database which actually resides locally in your machine. It is not the remote one, not the GitHub, but the local on your machine, is you first have to mark something for committing. The way you mark something for committing is you say git add, and then you say what it is you wanna uh, commit, or that is you wanna mark for committing. At this point, I'll just say dot, and we'll just include everything in my local folder, and that's done. I'll say git status again, and you'll see now what's marked for to be committed is that new file site slash index.html. And once again, we haven't committed anything yet. We just marked it to be committed. Well, in order to actually commit it, we'll say git commit. 
we'll say dash m which is required which is required for message and we'll give it a message imagine say my first page and we'll press enter and we're done and the only thing we need to do now is actually put this into our remote meaning into our github into our remote repository right now everything is sitting in the local repository and if we say git status again you'll see that everything is great except it will tell you that your branch meaning this origin that gh pages don't worry about this origin thing just ignore it for now but gh pages is ahead by one commit meaning our local version of our repository with all of our code is actually ahead of the one that is remote which is our github repository so the way we actually do it it actually tells you right here is just issue a git push meaning we'll take our repository take our database of our code and we'll push it to the remote database which is residing at github.com so we'll go ahead and say git push and at this point after we enter your machine might ask you for username and password for github my machine has it already entered automatically and you could look up on the web how to do that so it doesn't ask you again but we'll say git push and it should give you something like this we'll tell you something about the fact that it wrote into this repository and you'll see gh pages our local gh pages on our, our local local machine has been transferred to the remote one gh pages Okay, so now if we switch to our browser and we'll refresh this page, you'll see that this site folder showed up here. If we click inside of it, you'll see the index.html. Well, let's see if it actually works. We'll go to settings again, because I don't remember this uh, URL anymore. And we'll click on this URL, open up in a separate tab. And what we see here is that page made by GitHub for you. But remember that right underneath that folder is that folder called site. And if we say site slash, Here's our page, hello Coursera. That's the page that we made. And the reason I don't actually have to specify index.html page itself is because most servers, when you say slash, they will default to index.html. So I don't have to explicitly say it. And clearly GitHub server is one of those servers. And the truth is most servers out there actually do this. And if we created any more subfolders here, we could certainly specify them. And if you wanted to, for example, do assignments for different modules, and you could say module one assignment slash something and so on. And this is the way for you to be able to submit your assignments to us to be graded. And then you could continue making your changes. So we'll go ahead and open up Sublime. We could make another change. Hello, Coursera. It's a great course. We'll save it again. We'll go back to our command line. We'll say git status. And you'll see that now we have a modified page. Well, again, we haven't really marked it to be committed yet. If, we want, if we're done editing it, we could go ahead and say git add. And we could say it's explicitly if we want to. Or we could just say dot. It doesn't matter. And we edit it. We'll say git status again. And you'll see now it is again marked to be committed to be committed to the repository, to our local repository. Well, we'll say again, git commit dash M for message. And we'll say small addition to our page content. And we'll say enter. And now we're committed a change that we just made, committed that change into our local Git repository. But our remote repository doesn't know anything about this. In fact, if we switch the browser and we'll refresh, it's still the same. Well, the reason it's still the same is because nothing really has been uploaded to GitHub yet. And if we do git status, it will tell us again that our local branch, the GH pages, is ahead of the remote one by one commit because we committed something already. And we can have more than one commit here. We can have more than one commit and then at, this, at some point we'll go ahead and upload it or publish our changes to our repository. So we'll say git push to publish our changes. And we're done. So if we switch to the browser and refresh, it might take a little bit, but eventually this will happen. So something got, probably got cached. Here we go. It just takes a little bit for it to propagate from its repository to its website. So it took a few seconds, but it's here. Okay, so there's clearly many, many other commands that you could use. For example, you could use git pull if somebody else changed your repository. Let's say you're collaborating with somebody and somebody updated something in the remote repository in the GitHub and you want to get those changes to your local machine, you'll say git 
space pool and so on and again i encourage you to go through the first couple of two three chapters of the book and it's definitely very helpful for you to understand what's really going on with git however the commands i gave you should be good enough to be able to publish your code to github and at the same time publish it to github pages so they could be visible to the whole world and to the rest of your peers to be able to be graded so the next thing i would like to show you is how to use browser sync let's go ahead and clear our page and we are still here inside the github repository or our local folder we'll go ahead and go inside site and here's our index.html so browser sync is a command you could call from from the command line and here i am just pulled it out from my history and basically you say browser dash sync and you say start and you want to start the browser sync and you want to start it in server mode so it'll become like a local http server for you and you could say dash dash directory all that will do is it will actually give you a directory listing of the fo of the folder you're sitting in right now which is in this case is the folder called site and then you say dash dash files meaning which files should browser sync watch for and if any of those files change the browser sync will go ahead and reload those things in the browser so you don't have to keep clicking reload over and over and over again so in this case we said star i want to reload everything no matter what changes i want those changes reloaded right away so i'll go ahead and start it and once i start that it will go ahead and open up a browser uh, window for me and in this case you see it's localhost on um, port 3000 and since we did dash dash directory it's showing me the directory listing of that folder which is right now is the site folder so i could click on index right here and i could see that it connected to browser sync and here's this it's a great course so now what would be really neat is if i could now uh, pull this aside for a second and open up my my sublime text and just show you what happens when you actually edit this so now i could go ahead and say you know what let me remove this and i'll remove it and the second i save it take a look at what happens when i save the file when i save the file all of a sudden this gets updated as well so this is extremely convenient so that means whenever what is going on here the cascading style sheets new content whatever it always becomes immediately available right there in the page so you don't have to keep coming over here and clicking refresh that is a huge time saver when you're developing and trying to see immediately what's going on on the page without having to go and clicking refresh so that's browser sync it actually has a million other options and i encourage you to go on their website google for browser sync and you'll see all the option that it options that it has it's a great development helper tool so hopefully you will put it to good use Okay, at this point, your environment is all set up and you're ready to move on.